Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event um, where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, yes, we are a webinar. It's okay, you can call us that. We won't be offended. <laughs> Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, and they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and look at all of our recordings that we've done previously and watch them there. You have recordings, uh, PowerPoint presentations, if they've been included, links to resources mentioned during the sessions. All of those are ca captured and put up when we do the recording. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, anything related to libraries that could be useful to librarians, we are happy to have on the show. Um, and we do commission staff, Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes do presentations, and we sometimes bring in guest speakers, which is what we've done this morning. Um, today we have Judy Cook over here and Cindy Cochran, her, who are both from the Lincoln Lancaster County Genealogical Society. I get that right? Correct. <laughs> and um, they've got a presentation they're going to do here about um, genealogy resources, of course. Um, as you can see here on the first slide, it says it's from the cells meeting, Southeast Library System here in Nebraska. They did a presentation earlier this year there, and um, it was a great presentation. I wasn't able to attend the meeting, but I did hear about it afterwards, and it was really great resources and information in that. So we decided to bring them on the show here so that if anyone, for anyone who didn't get to go to Southeast Nebraska <laughs> and see that presentation, um, you can um, learn all about the resources that are available here. So. Um, I think I'll just <coughs> pass over to you guys and let you go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, we're always glad to share the uh, information about genealogy. That's kind of our passion. The first slide here is explaining the purpose of the society. And basically, we are open to anyone who is interested in genealogy. We have members who are from all over the United States. and. We do have uh, fine resources to be used for this, um, and basically that's what the presentation we're going to try to show you, some of the things that we do have available, particularly the part that I will concentrate on is the library, and Judy will tell you more about the online resources. So basically we'll start off with a picture of where we are located. Our little Genealogy Library is at Union College, which is in Lincoln, Nebraska, and it's in the Don Love Building, um, where you can go and find all of this great stuff. And you just walk up the stairs or the elevator, take a right turn, you're going to be at the library. It's the Ella Johnson Crandall Library, and uh, we're always happy to have you come and see us. You actually you will have uh, the entire Union College Library to do your research with. Um, our genealogy library is just a small portion of this, so it's quite helpful to be able to access other materials. For example, some of the Union College books that we find extremely useful, they have 140 volumes plus of the War of the Rebellion, which is the Civil War stuff. Fantastic resource. They have a number of encyclopedia sets and quite a few who's who volumes. So those don't actually belong to us, but they're certainly there for you to use as you come to do your genealogy research. We do have a photocopy machine and microfilm reader, and there are a bunch of public access computers. Now our portion of the library, the Genealogy Society, we have a collection of books, DVDs, microfilm, and periodicals that are housed within the Crandall Library. And some of our materials are reference and some of them are circulating, so a nice mixture of things. Now this is kind of just a look back in the past. Chloe Fouts was, she has passed away. She was the director of the Union College Library, and she was instrumental in making the arrangement for the housing of the society's materials in the early 1990s. And I just always like to 
pay my respects to her because a number of people will still remember her and she did such a good job in setting that up that we certainly appreciate all the work that she did to get this started. And in addition to the collection that we have cataloged as part of the Union College Library, we have around 3,000 volumes that were given to the society when the State Historical Society changed their mission in the early 1990s. And the ownership of these materials was made permanent in 2005. So again, we thank the Historical Society for providing these materials, which have become very useful in our mission. We have about 5,000 books available for research. Uh, we have bought some of these materials, but we have really had uh, generous donations from a lot of our members over the years, and that has definitely expanded our collection. So we're always happy to take donations. And we have around 3,000 uh, issues of magazines, genealogy periodicals, and they are arranged by state or country. And the way we access those, we use Heritage Quest, which many of the public libraries throughout Nebraska have access to that through the Nebraska Library mm -hmm. Commission. Yes, <laughs> and Heritage Quest has a section called Percy, and that is a periodical index. So you can look in there for your topics and then actually go to our catalog, which I'll be showing you later in the presentation, and see if we might have this particular magazine. And if we do, then you're certainly welcome to come over and find that. Uh, otherwise, uh, Percy articles are available for a fee from the Allen County Public Library in Indiana, right? Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. So, you have a couple of ways to access periodical articles. Our genealogy collection relies on our volunteers. We add the materials, we catalog the materials, and prepare them for circulation or whatever. We do follow the Union College Library's protocols. We use their barcodes, their circulation system, and their online catalog to access these materials. Now, besides the regular collection, we also have some archival materials. The early Lancaster County probate records from the late 1800s are stored at Union College Library, so we have access to these we can copy them uh, for people and make those available. And those, as Judy will talk about later, how to access this information. We have an index to these. We did index them. Uh, yes. Volunteers index them. Right. Uh, we have the early Lancaster County marriage records. These volumes were actually being thrown away after the microfilming and the society rescued those, and we have those in our archives. We can do digital scans of those for a fee. So that's, thank goodness, we did that. And we also have naturalization records, and this catalog here contains 120,000 index cards that were typed by a retired farmer in Lancaster County. His name was Melvin Sittler, and he actually indexed the Nebraska State Journal from 1873 to 1900, pulling out genealogical information, and he typed all of these cards. Just when wow. you think of the, yes, when you think <laughs> of the work that this man did, and I don't know, at one point, I think he had estimated how many typewriter ribbons and what all he had been through to get this done. <laughs> It was astounding. Wow. I think his wife assisted in that also. But. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, they, the, the couple, the Sittler couple, they did a fantastic job for us. And we just last, this past 
winter actually digitized all of those 120,000 index cards and we are in the process of making those available on our website. So we will be very happy to share those with folks as we get that online. The old newspapers actually came out of storage in some kind of bunkers near Meade in 1979. I can't remember what those, those were military bunkers, okay. I think, and somehow those newspapers were all stored there, and so the society members hauled them all out and Probably took them. Probably was a, a very safe place for them. I well, suppose. no, they were getting sort of damp, I think. Oh, right, they were right. starting mm -hmm. to deteriorate. Probably uh, wouldn't meet requirements now for safety and mm -hmm. handling yeah. in terms of molds and other things. Mm -hmm. that, right. That, you know, but they 1979. Took, yeah, so they took the pickup loads of these newspapers to uh, Melvin Settler's farm, and that's where he did all this work. And we also as, spend a lot of hours on preservation in the lower right corner of that picture. Uh, one of our couples are doing photography of the naturalization records, and then we have lots of indexing projects and things like that. So we're always working on preservation. Now this is go going to be a large project involving preservation. We need to scan all of the probate records that we currently have in our archives. They are deteriorating and we hope to be able to get all of those things digitized. So that's going to be a real biggie for us, but we're looking forward to doing that because I think it will be very valuable information. They are on microfilm, so they're... Well, my understanding is that the microfilming was done selectively, that it was the major pieces of paper that were in there, and so not mm -hmm. everything actually got done, but the bulk of it is on microfilm, but we have discovered over the years that as you know, microfilm can deteriorate it or right. become scratched. So we, we hope that by digitizing it, the documents will be clearer and, of course, can last a lot longer. We do have interest groups and workshops to assist genealogists. Through, we have these throughout the year, and um, you don't have to be a member to attend these uh, uh, presentations, and we're more than happy to welcome beginning genealogists and anyone who has an interest. Now, back in 1976, the Genealogy Society started copying information from the tombstones in Lancaster County. We compiled eight volumes of information from the cemeteries that we could find throughout the county. Those are printed and are available in our collection. We are also going to scan most of these documents so that you can get a DVD of that particular book if you have an interest in it. That's not quite done yet, but we're working on it. We're moving into the technological age. <laughs> yes. Now, our collection actually begins with the American Genealogical Biographical Index, known as the AGBI. That consists of over 200 volumes that are filled with personal names. So this is a very good resource for genealogists. And it leads to some of the things that are housed at the State Historical Society. Well, some of them we have and some of them they have, so yes. For, so when you think of Lincoln and Lancaster County, there basically are two places that are good mainly for genealogy, for genealogists if they're visiting, and that would be the State Historical Society and our genealogy library at Union College. We have a lot of things on Irish genealogy. And at some point, we received the holdings of the Nebraskans of Irish and Scotch-Irish ancestry. So that, those are very 
useful materials. We have books on Palatine and other Germans and French Canadians. We actually have a German interest group as well, which those folks are making good progress on their German ancestry. We have things on Czechs and Frisians. That's Netherlands. And thanks to the Martin and Kilpatrick collections, these uh, were gifts that were donated to the Nebraska State Historical Society and then passed along to us. And these people were actual collectors of English materials. And so we have a nice collection of English genealogy. And in fact, some of these records go, I mean, the items aren't this old, but the stuff that they're indexing are actually from medieval records. So they go way, way back. This is very interesting to me, the stuff that we have. We are strong in New England area. We do have the Massachusetts vital records. A number of those are online, but the ones that are still within copyright are not, and we do have the volumes of those for research. We have the New England Historical and Genealogical Register, lots of magazines on New England a big run of that. And we try to get books, genealogy books, from all the states. I would say we do better on the eastern half of the states rather than the west. We don't have as many things from the west. And here again, a, a more complete selection is at the State Historical Society for the state of Nebraska. We have the complete set of the 158 DAR lineage books and their new Forgotten Patriots book. If you use Ancestry for genealogy, they only have 154 of the volumes. <laughs> <laughs> um, our members have been requesting more Nebraska materials. You may think that's strange for us to be duplicating what the Historical Society has, but we're actually open different days of the week. So we do find that we complement each other on these collections. And we have been trying to beef up our Nebraska selections over the last few years, and we'll probably continue that for a little while. Just as an inset, the uh, Union College is a Seventh-day Adventist community. And so uh, their Sabbath begins on Friday evening and, and extends into Saturday. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're closed on Saturday. So genealogists coming here um, uh, cannot access our library on Saturday, but they can on Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And they can on Monday when the Historical Society is closed. So it's a... Uh, and we're open on Sundays. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Okay. Moving right along, here's a couple more things that would be of interest for Nebraska. And we have a lot of how-to books. So if you're running into a brick wall or something, we might have some helpful information on how to get your research going again. We have some good examples of family histories on our shelves. So if you're actually writing something like that, you might get some ideas on information from the past, uh, how to write something like this. You might find good examples of how your ancestors lived. We have old yearbooks, so you might even find photographs of some of these folks. We have the honor roll from uh, World War I for Lancaster County. There may be photographs of your ancestors in that volume. Did your ancestors travel from the farm to the city? We have flat maps, and we can show you where family farms are located. We have the 1903 flat map book, which is very useful. 
And we have old city directories for Lincoln, so and some, some from the county as well, not as many. And so you may be able to find an address, an occupation, things like this from your ancestors. Now don't forget information from newspapers. We actually do not have the newspapers. Those would be on microfilm at the Historical Society, but we do have indexes. So you might check us out for that type of resource. Our website is llcgs.info, and we have information that can be accessed on the internet. And we have our catalog, which is searchable without logging on as a member. So this is open to the general public. Just briefly going through this, you can access the whole Union College Library catalog or just our society catalog. And you can get a list of titles. You can get various searching choices. I'm kind of zooming through this because it's fairly self-explanatory once you get into it. And I think you can find your way around there fairly easily. If not, you can always email us and we can give you some searching hints or double check to see if we have the resource that you're looking for. We, you can have a choice of whether you want just a list of books or DVDs or whatever you're specifically, what format you're looking for and limit your search in that manner. Now one thing that we're just getting started with but I think has good potential, we have a list of online only genealogy books and when you, there's a little eyeball on the left hand side of the list of materials and when you click on this you click on the URL and it will actually take you out onto the internet and there is that particular book online at archive.org where you can look through the book. So we see this as a way of putting Nebraska resources that are pre-copyright and you may not think of it as, oh yes, this would be a good genealogy resource, but you'll be able to find it in our catalog and then go directly and read that item on the web. So now that you have some idea of all the good stuff that we have, any time that you are in Lincoln and you want to take a tour of the library, we hope you will stop by. Okay. I'm going to pass this on to Judy now, so excuse our, <laughs> our change, of change of pace here. here. Um, now actually, if you want, um, before we go on to your part, um, uh, Cindy Drake, who's from the Nebraska State Historical Society, is actually on with us, and she had a couple of comments. Um, more information about some of the things you were mentioning that I thought maybe now I could just pop in and yes. um, actually those bunkers that those newspapers were in. Um, Cindy says the original newspapers were stored in the Mead bunkers by the Nebraska State Historical Society for years after they were microfilmed. So okay. that was they microfilmed them first and then put them there for safekeeping. And the decision was made in the late 70s, 1970s, to give the newspapers to genealogists in the state to index. And arrangements were made with the Nebraska State Genealogical Society and the newspapers were distributed throughout the state to different groups. So oh, okay. I would assume then um, you guys maybe had gotten the Southeast Nebraska versions of them, the Friar area and other ones mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, we also have some from Hickman that some people have gone mm -hmm. through. And then she also said another comment, she just said, um, the books that were transferred from the Nebraska State Historical Society to the Lincoln Last Lancaster County Genealogical Society were non-Nebraska genealogical material from other states and countries. Um, we kept general genealogy guides and materials from other states and countries, but not those related to specific counties in other states. Um, we did keep the state and local histories from other states that are still maintained in our closed stacks. We don't add this to the collection. Um, and you can use their online catalog to locate what histories they do have from other states. So it's just a little more info about what they have compared to what you guys have. <laughs> right, so. right, yes, definitely. Um, this is one of the reasons uh, uh, we celebrate Clove Fouts because um, they needed a place to go. Uh, and at the same time, 
our society had what things we gathered in someone's basement, and uh, she felt like <laughs> it was time to find a site and being able to take them there. And, and the sense of cooperation of being able to go back and forth has, has been very, very helpful. Um, what I would like you to do now is to uh, take a tour to our website. We have an interactive website, uh, and uh, I put the address in red, uh, although as we all know, it's sometimes hard to forget or hard to remember the sequence of letters. If you have difficulty with that, uh, a, a search uh, by your browser for Lincoln, Lancaster County, Nebraska genealogy will get you there. Make sure you put Nebraska. There are other Lancaster counties, uh, in, in, and there are other Lincolns in um, the U.S. Um, but we uh, are, are moving toward that. I recently attended a Federation of Genealogical Societies conference in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, where the Allen County Library is. Uh, it was awesome to see that library with its collection, but it was also good to attend the sessions to see how much more genealogical societies are making the transitions as libraries are <laughs> to doing more with technology, trying to get move things to digital information, uh, sort of a coming of age. And so our website is very much uh, uh, in process, uh, and um, we, um, we're, we're working with that. I do want to add one other note. When we made the presentation for cells, uh, my portion also included uh, some specific databases that were in libraries and online sites. We couldn't cover all of that today, but we'll come back another time uh, with uh, more detail on uh, genealogical resources that are out there and databases that we think are great to have in libraries. Uh, as we go on with the, um, this is the home page of our site, and the center portion uh, is one where we focus on programs and activities and meetings that are coming up that our society is supporting. Normally, we have monthly meetings on the second Tuesday of the month that are free and open to the public, and we meet at a local church here in Lincoln. Um, the um, October is uh, National Family History Month. So this year, we're uh, cooperating with Southeast Community College to have what we're billing as a two-day conference. You'll note that on October 12th, we have uh, a nationally known speaker, Lisa Also, uh, coming to make presentations, and she's dealing with topics like uh, doing Eastern European research, uh, the, the difficulty in often finding your feminine ancestors, mm -hmm. where the male head of household was listed, but good luck in finding <laughs> yeah, the, your great-great-grandmother. Uh, she's going to do a fun one on, um, uh, I think it has something to do about murder and mystery and so on, a case study. Uh, Phyllis Erickson from our group is also doing one on uh, brick walls. And so if you have genealogists in your area who uh, would like to attend this conference, uh, check the information on our website. It's still coming up. Uh, we also have then uh, on the uh, web page, you noticed on the right-hand side, we had events that are coming up. And we have room to list only about two or three on the right-hand side, but if you go down to the bottom where it says see more events, you'll see some of the things that are coming up, not only uh, in our society. We, we, we like to be reciprocal and show other things that are happening. Um, we'll often show the, the brown bag lunches that are being held at the State Historical Society. This is a lock-in that the Omaha Dale Clark Library is having. It's a very popular thing in Omaha. And some of our members have gone there and enjoyed it. They're blessed with having um, a genealogist and their library staff, and they have um, free sessions uh, on uh, Saturdays. Um, we have something that we're happy with that we have just started with Lincoln City Libraries. We've been able to reserve the meeting rooms at Walt Library every Sunday afternoon uh, for meetings that are open to the public. Uh, and uh, Coming up this Sunday, we have an interest group that focuses on technology that's spearheaded by Susan Peterson. You may have seen her a blog on long-lost relatives. She also has a blog going right now on how to organize your materials. If 
genealogists need help with anything, it's organization. And so it's, it's almost becoming a support group of, <laughs> uh, I, I made this step in organizing, uh, but she's doing this one on Sunday on uh, using the cloud uh, for storing genealogy and storing your photos, uh, how to make use of that and gives examples of that. You'll notice that we also have, uh, Cindy mentioned that we have a Germanic research interest group. We have one that focuses on DNA, uh, which is uh, a hot item in, uh, in genealogy. And so there's an interest group that meets periodically. Uh, they share what they found in their DNA research and talk about the latest developments in that. We have one that has sort of a, a Nebraska-related title called uh, the Gitter Dunn Group, uh, where, um, again, there's this encouragement to get those musty boxes out of your closet that have the photos that haven't been identified, work on it, identify them, uh, preserve them, uh, digitize them, uh, and then put them in a, a, a a book or uh, a chart or a graph or something you can share with relatives or bring into a library. If it's, if it's published, a, a good family history uh, can be housed in a library, but we can't take boxes of papers that you've been storing under your bed and you're not sorted. <laughs> uh, um, you'll also notice another event coming up here. We, just like uh, um, in libraries, we often work with uh, book groups and book clubs, we have discussion groups that are free and in the community. We have our first Thursday one and our third Wednesday one. Uh, we would like to work with uh, other libraries of the city to, to get some that are in the evening and on weekends because these right now are only available to people who are not working on those times. We also promote other activities that are going on in the community. We have a wonderful Welsh Heritage Center in Wymore, Nebraska, which is just down the road to the south. Uh, they're having a heritage festival the weekend of October 4th through the 6th. And they are bringing in a consultant uh, from uh, Utah who specializes in, uh, in, in the Mormon Center who specializes in Welsh research. It's the kind of thing that we we like to let other people know what's going on in the community, not just um, our own things. Um, one of the things that we, we really hope to do with our conference uh, coming up in October uh, is, you may have noticed it was a two-day conference. We have our speakers on the 12th, but on the 11th, we would like to have a library or archive research time. We're realizing that this portion of Nebraska can be a, a genealogical destination site. Um, it's, it's not just the Fort Wayne's and the Mid-Continent. Uh, we, we all can be destinations for genealogical research. We have some priceless things here in, um, in Lincoln, not only our, our library at Union College and the State Historical Society, but the American Heritage Society for Germans from Russia, uh, we have a Mormon Center, the LDS Center, where you can do research. Uh, there are records stored at Nebraska Wesleyan. Uh, the Catholic Diocese has uh, religious records available. Our public libraries have uh, materials that can be used. UNL has a fantastic archive collection. Mm. I have to take just a moment to say there were some very generous people who collected the things that, that are priceless. And rather than just letting them be sold at a garage sale or an estate sale, they donated them to the University of Nebraska Archives. They're being preserved. Um, this, this is a very good thing. Your own uh, communities can be destinations for genealogy. Um, as a genealogist, I think you do this too, Cindy. I always go to the library in the community because librarians know where to tell me where to go. They not only tell you uh, where there might be a museum or a collection or a uh, historical society, but they can tell you about people resources. Okay, I'd like to go to another portion of our website now called surname research. This is something that uh, many uh, genealogical societies are working with. We used to have uh, paper copies of this, but the members of our society have listed the surnames, and you'll note there are like 1,488 right now, and this will grow. This will grow as we get new members, uh, and as, uh, for instance, if Cindy and I discover other surnames to research, 
We put up the information about the surname we're researching. We also indicate where they lived and when they lived there. And that's helpful to uh, a person searching because maybe you know that during that time period your people were in uh, Kentucky or not wherever we listed it there. If you find, and you can be anywhere in the country or in the world checking this, if you find, for instance, that you are interested in this surname, that it's one that you are researching, you go to the icon that looks like a little envelope, and you can send an email to the person who put the information up about it. This is a hidden or a blind email, so you don't get their actual email, but you can make an initial contact with that person and say, I'm also researching this surname. My people lived in such and such a place. Would you be interested in exchanging information? Cool. So, well yeah. well. so it is, and it, it's, but it's, uh, it's the kind of thing that not everybody knows what to do with it when they see it on the menu on the left, and so that's why I felt compelled to uh, uh, talk about it today. Um, another one that <clears throat> we is constantly being updated and is very much a work in process is searching our database. Um, this is, um, uh, it's, right now it's an extensive database. It's free to all. Uh, we're continuing not only to add the database information, but to correct it. If we find that there are some errors in, uh, for instance, when um, uh, somebody was copying a name from a newspaper and they made a very simple misspelling, uh, for instance, Colfax County was misspelled. Mm -hmm. If you notice something like that, we're in the process of correcting it. Some of the things that we have uh, on this database section, we have information about cemeteries, marriages, probate, people in old newspapers, the Sittler things that Cindy talked about. Uh, you'll also notice down here that we ha are, are working on adding naturalization records. Um, this is very much in process, but what I'm going to invite you to do is to uh, peruse the site one of the things our webmaster added that is a fun one is um, uh, links that represent the cemeteries in Lancaster County. And they're active links, and so if you click on it, you can find out uh, some more information about where it is. Uh, they used to give the directions only in range and township, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to navigate that way. <laughs> but if they tell me it's so many miles from this intersection or, or that, or we're trying to get GPS readings on for the the Garmin guided people, uh, they can find it. But again, we're working on that. Um, the part that uh, we encourage you to use is the one that says search all data. Uh, there's a lot to see on this slide. <laughs> one of the reasons is that our webmaster wanted you to know that if you hover over some of these things, you can get more information. But if you're searching and you would like to search all data, all you really need to enter is the last name or, if you're not for sure how to spell a last name, a partial last name. If you enter that in, it will search through our databases to see if we have any information with that name in the cemetery records, the marriage records, the mortuary records, the newspapers, the naturalization. Uh, what may happen is if you have a very common name, it'll say that you have to add a first name or narrow it down a little bit. But if you try searching that, for instance, at B-E-N-E, -E, here we've come up with a name Benedict. Um, now, gene genealogists always love unusual names like Allard. Uh, unfortunately, mine are mostly Johan and <laughs> very popular names, James. Um, but Allard Cook, you'll notice, I'm sorry, not Cook, Benedict, uh, was married on June 16th. 1888. But here's that part about the feminine information. Okay, let's, we sure wish we could find out more about that. So if we click on it, we find out that the groom was 24 and the bride's name is Nellie Williams. She's 23. Um, this, it tells uh, the date. It also tells uh, in the marriage records what book and what page the information is found. Now, this is helpful if you go to uh, the State Historical Society. You can look up the microfilm, uh, or you can check with us to see if we have that particular uh, book. Remember how we rescued some of those that were being say uh, had already been microfilmed? Um, they can be uh, uh, 
scanned and you'll find even more information. You'll find who performed the ceremony, who the witnesses were. If you want to contact us to get more information about something that you find on the research, use this click on contact and send us an email. If it's a suggestion of an error uh, on the site that you've noticed, that you've done enough history that you know the name was not spelled A-L-L-A-R-D, it's E-R-D every place else, or uh, if you are looking for something and want to know if we might have access to it, send it to uh, an email to us. Uh, one of our members, Sharon Shelley, checks this faithfully every day, and she's really learned the system. If it's something that should go to Cindy in the library, she immediately sends the email to her. Uh, if it's um, one that affects me and something I'm doing with educational programming, she sends it to me. Uh, if it deals with membership questions, but this is something we're, we're really trying to do on our website is to keep current uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, when someone tries to contact us, they can reach us. Something that uh, one of our members is working on, uh, her name is Susie Dunn, and she's had library experience and she knows how important it is to have a list of resources, but she's kicked it up a step. We used to try to maintain listings of, of places to get more information for genealogy in uh, our little booklet that we handed out every year. And you could always count on something being wrong. The contact name had changed, the phone number wasn't yeah. correct, or maybe we typed it in wrong and it was published wrong. Uh, here's the wonder of uh, a website and doing that. Uh, and so she has the links. So for instance, if you want to go to the Family History Center, um, 32nd and Old Cheney with the Mormon information, mm -hmm. you click here and you find out how to contact them, how to communicate them, when their hours are, uh, the American Historical Society of Germans from Russia. This is internationally known. I, I learned about that mm -hmm. in, in Indiana. And for example, our speaker who's coming here is anxious to come and visit the site because they have records. There's a fee for doing the researches there, but it's a, a place to visit even if you don't have any ancestry of Germans from Russia because they have the, the tours um, in the afternoon where you can see what life was like uh, in early days. Uh, uh, as you go on down, um, um, Susie is constantly gathering these. It's a long list. We would like it to be longer. We would like you to um, go to this section called Local Resources and look through it. And if your group isn't on there, please uh, email contact and we'd like to put it on. We've included museums and uh, historical societies that we know about and that we have information about, but I know there are other treasures in the state that we'd like to do it. And, Doing this in a reciprocal basis is, is very helpful because uh, if a genealogist is looking for something in one county in Nebraska, uh, they may very often have somebody in another one. And if we know where to help each other do that, uh, if this is something I'd like to do. Um, the other thing that we have on the bottom of our website, um, I mentioned Susan Peterson before. She maintains our social media, Facebook our um, uh, blog and Twitter accounts. We also have a member brochure down there and then something else that's sort of fun to look at in terms of uh, the people from uh, all over who are checking into our website and how many hits we have. One fun story. Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and one fun story was a, a charming uh, gentleman from Germany who by searching through the the library um, record, library catalog that, catalog, yeah. that Cindy talked about, found something written by, was it Jules? J-U? Well, yes, that was right. the surname. It was, it was a surname, surname that he was interested in. He contacted us. Uh, it was a very small um, publication, and so we scanned it and sent it to him, and you could feel the joy all the way across the ocean. <laughs> he, uh, he has since joined our society, and I'm equally joyful because he lives in the area where my ancestors live. So uh, we're appreciating the, the wonders of, of a website. Uh, 
this is sort of my, my pitch for collaboration. The thing that we found in working with our society is that so many budgets are being trimmed. Uh, in, in Lincoln libraries, we've seen staff reductions, we've, um, we've seen hours cut short, the same thing in the State Historical Society. Um, so we try to do our part <laughs> to let people know these are, these are organizations and groups worthy of maintaining. And so uh, one of the things genealogists can do is sign in. <laughs> that we have come and visited your site. Uh, we've come to your museum. We've come to your historical society. Uh, we've uh, contacted you at the Library Commission to find information. And, and, and so we know that's a role we can play to help organizations. Um, but we, we know that we also need to form partnerships, uh, just as um, with the historical society and the, and the materials coming over to the library, we can refer things back and forth to each other. Uh, we can do collaboration. Um, when the 1940 census was released and, and the information was available, oh, yeah. uh, that was a big deal, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Cindy Drake helped make it a really big deal because she contacts someone from the National Archives in Kansas City to come up as a speaker, and we just sort of threw a party at the Walt Library, which we happened to have reserved on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. And we brought 1940s cars and. Um, Depression glass and 1940s foods, some people dressed in 1940s clothes, and we helped a lot of people understand that uh, they could help index the 1940 census and that it was available. Um, we uh, especially appreciate libraries for meeting sites, uh, meeting sites that are available, that maintain good parking. Um, that's mm -hmm. an area that is very helpful. Uh, I have um, I won't tell all my personal stories about how wonderful librarians have been across the state of Nebraska, but uh, they're there. Um, the archives, I mentioned the archives at UNL. We have archives. Certainly the State Historical Society has archives. Uh, and the, the archives and the things that you have at the Library Commission. Uh, I, um, I have two stories to tell about the Library Commission. A relative who really wanted to check census records, but she didn't have access to Heritage Quest through her small town library. She lives in rural Nebraska. Uh, so found her driver's license and got her hooked up with uh, you. Right. And you could, again, uh, know that there was a happy camper because she was getting <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> census records yeah. from you. My happy camper story is finding a book about the Honey Creek Mine, a rather obscure thing, but you had a book at the Library Commission that I was able to come and read and actually find a photo of my husband's ancestors. Oh, oh yeah, the Library <laughs> Commission. Um, the historical societies, again, uh, volunteers are, are dealing with budget issues, space constraints. Uh, we, we can work together and um, help celebrate those, the museums. The ethnic societies uh, have treasure their heritage and would like to work with us and, and mm -hmm. can sometimes perhaps bring things in to help with a display in a library or encourage their members to um, do activities in a library. The Family Search Center, I, I've mentioned before, connects you to the resources in Salt Lake City and the microfilm. One area I'm hoping we can do more with has to do with youth projects. We found in working at Walt Library that Boy Scouts have a genealogy badge that they can earn. And if you invite them to a library, they can begin their research by looking, for instance, here in Lincoln on Ancestry.com. So a Boy Scout just delighted because he, he found his grandfather's name on the census. And uh, now he knew the names that were dealing with that. Um, 4-H uh, can use it for their projects that they do. And mm -hmm. if, we, if we focus on that, I know in Blair they bring the people who have won 4-H projects to meet to, to talk to their genealogy society about what they've done. Um, I'll close with, with one thing that I, I really enjoyed. We were having a session uh, with, where we collaborated with Lincoln Libraries on one book, one Lincoln. And we were talking about using uh, databases to learn about, and that was the destiny of the Republic. So it was learning about the Civil War, but we were looking at A to Z, which is a database that they have uh, um, 
at Lincoln Libraries. And there's a timeline in there, and there were also photos. Much like some of the wonderful photos you can find on Nebraska Memories. Mm -hmm. um, but here was a 12-year-old sitting at one computer and her grandmother in a wheelchair sitting at the other computer. And the 12-year-old said, Grandma, look, I just found a picture of the town you grew up in, and I think it's from the time period that you lived there. Hmm. And it was one of those generation connecting things that mm -hmm. can happen in a library if, if we can help them get there. So I, that's my windy report. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, that was great. Yes, thank you very much. I'm going back over here. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments? I know Cindy gave us some more information. It was great. Thank you very much, Cindy. <laughs> I'll get your microphone out there so you can join in. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, uh, thoughts on um, Judy and Cindy here's <laughs> um, this, uh, presentation? You can type into the questions section if you go to webinar interface. They're welcome. To, um, they're happy to take any questions that you might have. Nothing came in while you were talking except for Cindy Drake's uh, okay. helpful information there. Hmm? No. Doesn't look like anything. Okay. Well, um, that's okay. If you have any questions right now, that's fine. Um, uh, just thank you for a very informative presentation. So you do have some thank yous coming through. <laughs> um, well, you guys know where to find them. They're um, on the presentation we have here. I have the PowerPoint. We post it up when the recording goes up. Um, all the links and various websites that you guys are mentoring, I, I hope I caught all of them. <laughs> um, as we were going through this the show, I was putting them into the Library Commission's Delicious account, so all the links will be available to you as well afterwards. So um, definitely if you have any questions want to do more research on this. Um, we do want to add to our links, mm -hmm. and, and we need your help on that um, because we don't want to get misinformation. Right, yeah. So contact them there, and they can help you do that. And Or if you... Um, want to have them work more with your library and what you're doing um, for helping your, if your people in your community are doing their genealogical research. Um, these are the people to talk to, <laughs> definitely. Um, Just keep on so. welcoming genealogists. Uh, they've always <laughs> loved libraries and they still do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, we are happy to have you there, definitely, and <laughs> have you come in. Um, thanks for giving the good you know, comments about us, too. I didn't pay her anything to say that. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> You just try and work together, yeah. All right, well then, it doesn't look like anything has come in urgently right now. So thank you very much, Judy and Cindy, for being with us this morning. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending um, the show. I'll take the mouse. You just need the mouse on the keyboard. Um, the show has been recorded, as usual, so it will be available to you um, to watch and listen to later. I'll let you guys all know when it is ready to, um, to be viewed. Other than that, um, that will wrap it up for this um, week's edition of Encompass Live. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when, yes, we do have next week, <laughs> when our topic is um, Get the Word Out with um, BooksAreJustTheBeginning.com. This is a new um, PR campaign that the Library Commission is working on putting together. Um, Mary Jo Ryan, who's our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission, will be with us next Wednesday to talk about this new program to um, promote and advocate for your library. So hope, please do join us then. Um, the week after that, you'll notice we are off. It is our state Nebraska Library Association, Nebraska School Librarian Association conference. So we will be taking that week off just for your um, planning um, because we will, most of us will be there at the conference. Um, out in Kearney. <laughs> so I remember where it was. <laughs> so um, there's our schedule. So hope you join us next week. Um, and Compass Live is also on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, please do go there and like our page on Facebook. You'll get notifications of when new sessions are coming up. Um, reminders of what the today's session is. You can see here I just I posted a reminder to join us this, this morning for this one. And when our recordings are available, I post up here as well. So um, if you are, as I said, a big Facebook user, definitely go ahead and like us there and you'll um, keep up to date on what we're doing here. There we go. Okay, other than that, nothing urgent has come in, it looks like, while I've been babbling away here. So we will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week.